So I'm now going to share with you a couple of little construction details and the reason I'm doing this is because we often get emails into the office saying well how do I do this bit or how do I do that bit and that's because sewers tend to be very visual people and of course in an ideal world I could just clone myself and I could just put myself in every single sewing room in the world. Not going to happen however but you can come into my office and I can show you how to do this. Now I've done this just on a scrap piece of fabric and this is what you make muslins for. You make muslins both for your fit and to work out construction details like this so you know what you're doing. So you don't end up, when it comes to machine time, to looking at the pattern going, I, I don't get it, what's going to happen? So you do it this way, and you draw all over it like we've done here, and you're going to get it really, really simply. Now, this is one of those things that once you get it, it's like, oh, so easy. But for some people I know, it's much easier if you see it, me doing it like this. So here we go. What I've done is I've marked all the uh, cut lines and stitch lines on here. Now clearly I've marked it with a sharpie and you're not going to do that. So um, the best thing to do is to use anything that you like to mark things with, basting thread, um, pins, lightweight pencil, wash away marker, whatever you want to do, but mark it. And it actually says this on the instructions. And if you ever use Rumbar patterns, you'll know that I'm very kind of laid back about, you know, the instructions. Do it the way you want to do it. This is how we do it. But on this one, no, no, no. Follow what I say. If you don't, you'll still be able to make the garment, but it'll be a lot harder for you. And given that this is your hobby, this is what you do for fun, it kind of makes sense to do it the easy way and lose all the grief. So this is what you do. You mark out your stitch and cut and fold lines. Very, very simply. And then you take your placket. Now I've marked on here, I've got my bottom seam line and I've got my side stitch line here and that's a quarter of an inch and it is marked on the pattern so you'll be able to see it. And what I'm going to do is just pin it down the stitch line it needs to go on. Now you've got to bear in mind that you'd normally be doing this on the flat and I'm doing it on a dummy which is never much fun for anybody. So you'll just have to work with me on this. But you basically just sew it along here. Obviously you will have interfaced your um, front of your shirt and you will have interfaced this piece here which is really your button stand facing. Um, you can always do without the interfacing if you've got the fabric that will take it but personally I wouldn't like to do that. Now I'm just fiddling around with this in the manner of a demented children's TV presenter and that goes right down to the bottom and now what you do is you've got your button stand placket laying nice and flat there what you do now is get your trusty scissors and you cut along what's called the cut line quite clearly. So I'm going to cut down here right down to the bottom and then it goes in this little triangle mark here. It says on the pattern cut into the triangle mark. That's exactly what I'm doing. Diagonal lines into the corner of it. Now, let's see if you can see all that. Is that all perfectly obvious to you? Okay. Now, we're going to work on this side first. Here is what you do. You obviously press this open. And on this side here, I've pressed the 5 eighths of an inch turning underneath. So when I end up doing this, I've got a nice neat uh, facing. And obviously I'm going to turn it to the inside. I keep saying obviously, but it's not obvious at all. But it is once you've seen it. So I turn it all to the inside like this, and it would really help if I hadn't pinned everything together to this wretched cami under here, but hey, that's what you get with low production values. So you've now got a nice, neat button stand, and obviously you'll press this down, and you'll stitch down this line here, down this stitch line, and then you go on to the other piece. And you can see here, I've got about a quarter of an inch seam allowance here. That's going to be folded under to give a nice neat edge and you'll press that under. But the key with this is to fold this bit, the bit that says fold on your pattern, that's the fold line, fold it over and then just bring the, the fronts together so the centre fronts line up. Now obviously this is quite fiddly to do on a stand and you will be doing it probably on your ironing board or your work table and it will be much much easier. But that's basically what you end up with, a nice neat flat button placket. Now when you do this, you're going to be stitching down here so you've got a nice sort of equal button placket. There's a couple of things to bear in mind though when you get to this stage. The first thing is, is that you're going to have a seam allowance here, so you're going to have quite a chunk of fabric 
if you've got a thick bulky fabric what you might want to do instead of turning this one under is leave it flat and just overlock it or use a satin bias or something to finish it off because you might find if you have got a bulky fabric when you come to do your buttonholes your buttonhole will bump up over that seam and give you a bit of a wriggly one which is not good and the other thing to tell you when you do this one is because the seam fantastic shirt is so simple and it really is quite an understated little number is that you've got to get it absolutely perfect the whole point of it is this area here, this bit and the collar and stand. So when you're putting your collar and your stand on, you start sewing the stand on at the centre back. Sew on at the centre back and go round the front on one edge, and then go back to the centre back and go round the front on the other edge. This way your collar will stay nice and slick like this. If you do it starting at one and going round, you want to get it off kilter a little bit. It pretty much always happens. So do it that way. So those are my little construction tips for you for the Super Fantastic shirt. I think you'll find them really helpful and I would really urge you to do it this way.